You want me to take it? Here, I'll take it for you. Do you want more? No. Hey, this is Glenn's cup. He may want it again later. <laughs> Hi, young man. Hi, sir. How about yourself? I figured I'd be good. Good to see you. Don't see you. What? Ten years? About that. I just want to see you. Hey, Mom. 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 I thought I should be taking them while they all greet. Oh, yeah. And while they're all greeting and hugging on each other. How about yourself? Taping while everyone's hugging. <laughs> That's like what you see on the post office. <laughs> 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 no, you're supposed to be looking at the picture. Oh. But it just took. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, I just met. I got, oh. I was telling us how you met. Oh, good. Listen, <laughs> let me hear how we met. So, yeah. Nope, you're good. Well, you were telling me how they met. How you met that. Look out. Well, it was John's fault. <laughs> I guess my fault. Why was it John's fault? Because Dale was his drinking buddy. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. Now, we wasn't going to tell the whole history. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, we started, they went into the Marine Corps, and uh, I wrote to several. Boys? Soldiers, but I never knew. No, there's no boys in the Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote to several men. <laughs> uh, One of them even called her a queen bee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> that made boys call I was about 16. Uh, but I never met them. I just wrote to them and spent all my money on, on care packages. <laughs> <laughs> and taking pictures of me. Yeah, yeah, and uh, anyway, I started corresponding with Dale, and he started writing back, of course, because he was lonesome. <laughs> he didn't write to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> She's flowered to that, man. <laughs> and, How many did you propose to? <laughs> and, uh, I proposed to her uh, through the mail. <laughs> I well, wondered how many of those others. How many? He came home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He came home on furlough. I knew he was coming home on furlough. So no, that was out of boot camp. So I begged Mom for two solid weeks to let me date Dale. And finally, she said, okay, but don't you let your daddy know. And so... I was all primped and primed and <laughs> ready to date this friend of mine, and he didn't ask me for a date. <laughs> and Ma whooped and hooped, and she rolled on the floor all bold. She was so tickled. <laughs>
and uh, didn't have a good time. <laughs> now tell them about the letter that I wrote you, and then at oh, the I end don't, of I, it, it was a joke. Oh, it was a joke about Lone Ranger and his horse, and it led up to like he was going to propose. I mean, it was real old mushy and everything. And, 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 it was uh, about Lone Ranger and his horse. Well, I was so mad. I thought, Boy, she wrote me a letter after that, and she told me what she thought of that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when he came home, you were weren't you? Well, it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he got, we, we got engaged. You know, I was, I was 17 going on 18, and I knew I was going to be a, a, just a, an old maid. She <laughs> 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 just rushed right in. Her, huh? <laughs> Our next anniversary will be 59 years. Uh, but um, anyway, it's been a turbulent roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, yeah. I think so. I think what? You hung on really good. They have more down to the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I didn't have any place to run, so I didn't run very far. And. <laughs> We always made up. And here well, we are. Now, cool. now we're so old we can't fight anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Tercy and Wanda met at a rodeo. I bet. I don't know. No. <laughs> no. No. Hell, I was going about two years before I even knew this letter. <laughs> <laughs> you, you didn't know you, you didn't know you were married for fifty years. <laughs> Videotaping family yeah. secrets. How do you like that job I did? Look nice, don't you? Who comes there? We got in combat. Everybody. I'm making a living. That's it. I carry that man down. That's my work. I'm going to keep it up. They wanted the firepower back. We have a place to go. What to do? She needed some help, and she didn't know what and how to do it to get the help. So anyway, she went out and saddled this old mare up. Well, she was a fool. And anyway, she couldn't hardly get on the old mare, and that's the middle of the night too. Started in Stockton, Kansas, 14 miles. She got down the road for a little ways. Three riders. Try to get the old mare into a run, which she just could just barely trot. Anyway, she pulled down into the yard. Anyway, she had me down there in that in that draw. Mare had the colt. She went and jumped back on the mare. I jumped on the colt. We beat them old boys. <laughs> Notes for the book. 
<laughs> that would have been classic to be taping you while you're trying to write all that down. Hey, Glenda, we believe that to be a Oh, my goodness. So I got into a riot club and I told Ronnie and I just left. So I knew I had to get on stage. Tell you. I can't believe you never heard that one. This is serious. This is true, right? Yeah, maybe. Was in California. Who was? Man under a God in California. On the way home from boot camp. Was that Bob? No. So we got as far as Dodge City, but then we was dirty, no money, and uh, had nobody to pick us up. So we decided that whatever train headed east, we was going to hop that baby. So there about, just about dark, just, you know, here comes the little train. Anyway, they had cattle cars then. You know, but anyway, the, all the doors closed. There was a moon. We couldn't couldn't get a door open. But they had some cool cars. I thought. Anyway, we we jumped on there, jumped, run along the side, stumbled, and finally got all the cool cars crawled up in that. You know how the bottom of the cool car comes down. You know, let the coal out. <laughs> I've seen you two or three times since I haven't seen you. Yeah, that's right. Last time, last time I was around. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Oh, you got to wait. You got to give it up. That was already planned. Oh, no, 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 no
somebody brought us a Christmas basket. Full of food, and another one had toys. They weren't new toys, but I got the biggest red-headed doll. I was so... Uh, pretty high, isn't it? That doll was that big. <laughs> and she had red hair. And I'll tell you, I thought that was a best Christmas. Oh, I love that doll. <laughs> but uh, Mary Lou Brandstetter, she was younger than me. And of course, um, uh, Myrtle visited quite often. And I was selfish with my dolls. I was really selfish. And I'd get that kid by herself. I said, you need more balls for more. Don't you touch my dolls. I didn't dare do it in front of mom. Because I knew what I'd get. But uh, I put the fear in her. <laughs> she didn't bother my dolls. <laughs> you know, Betty, that's the only no. weapon I ever had for my dad. Because was on Christmas night.
and she all through the year she was very clean with it and always would dump it in the toilet stool and flush it. Well, right. she was sitting out on our front porch and I had a flower bed down over the brick wall that I had along the edge of my front porch. And she got up, I didn't see her do it, but she got up and emptied her spit can right down over the brick wall. And I had some cactus planted down there. And I noticed it, you know, and I knew where it come from. And I went out there and I said, Mom, from now on, be sure you go to the toilet and empty your spit jar. And she says, I do. And I said, well, you've spit, uh, done thrown some of it over the brick wall. She said, no, I didn't. I said, well, you can go over and look. She says, it must be dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> She was staying with mom and dad, and I came up from Texas for a visit, and they had gone somewhere, and I got her reminiscing, and she said she had chewed tobacco since she was seven years old, because she was raised on a tobacco farm in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. but that's so, where mom got started. Yeah. She worked at Tucker Field. That's what she's telling me. Uh -huh. She worked in the field. Yeah. yeah. Picking tobacco? Yeah. They grew, they grew the tobacco. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, and she told me she was three. <laughs> so well, your she's like, well, this is my granddaughter. I guess I'll <laughs> <laughs> I just worked out in the field, you know, like the kids would but I'll pick work out long with her real good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Got addicted to it. Yeah. Pretty young. Yeah. Ma used to uh, chew, they all, Ma used to chew tobacco too. Really? Yeah. Now yeah. I don't remember that. Well, she, that. she got saved and converted and she gave it up. She never done it after that. Well, that's but, all I remember is her, is her Bible. Uh-huh. But, uh, Mandy, all of them. Mandy oh, chewed yeah. snuff. <laughs> five uh, brothers. They all, they all did it. Remember that grand name, Five Brothers? Mm -hmm. Boy, that's... And they was snuff, snuffing up their nose. And that stuff would kill a mule. That stuff was powerful. Well, he says he started smoking when he was seven. He needs to take the real. Well, John lived down, down over KC Pool Hall when I was a little old kid. Anyway, John said, go down and pick up some cigarettes. Let's we'll roll us some cigarettes. He was, he, he was afraid, he was ashamed to go do it himself. I didn't know any better, so I'd pick up the <coughs> cigarette bus, take it back up there, and we'd take that tobacco out of the cigarettes, roll us up a cigarette. <laughs> That's what Granny did with me with her day's work, her chewing tobacco when I was living with her, who lived above Graves Drugstore. Yeah. And she'd say, Jackie Lou, I'm out of day's work, you got to go downstairs. <coughs> well, I was ashamed. Back then, they wouldn't sell it to the kids. Mm -hmm. So, but she said, you got to do it. So she'd send me downstairs to get her day's work, and I'd go there and I'd say, Granny needs her day's work. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to do anything. I was cheating that stuff. Blair, <laughs> uh, you remember the time that we all went to Emporia? Uh, Emporia. We went with Gertie. Was her, I believe she married Susan. I don't remember. Gertie and Raymond, maybe. Uh, and Dad threw a firecracker in the bed with them. And we went with them. And they got mad and went home and left us there. Do you remember that? And we were hitchhiking back. I remember you planted up there too. Did you? Did you? Did you remember that, Glenn? You should have been long. And rough on the roads, you know. Yeah. Little like it is now. Up in them rolling hills, there wasn't no cars. And we didn't. And we didn't have any food. And we got, I think it was about Cassidy. And Mom and Dad sent, I, I thought it was you, Francie, sent us around. And we knocked on doors and asked if they had any leftovers. 
and we've got all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 